morning or afternoon uh, to everybody, as the case may be. Uh, I'm on the West Coast, so it's still morning for me, but uh, some of you no doubt listening from other places. So um, uh, just a really brief introduction, a little, little bit about myself. Uh, I, I, I started off my career as a mechanic and a fabricator. Um, I'm an old junkyard dog, uh, literally, and uh, pulling parts in a wrecking yard way back when. And uh, I burned through one career uh, doing that sort of thing, uh, working in a pair of coveralls, uh, fixing things, making things. And uh, the, at a point I had an opportunity to transition into uh, design work. Uh, started off with Inventor. Um, I saw the beta of R1 because I'm fortunate enough to live just uh, 45 minutes away from an Autodesk coding center. Um, but I started working with it about R3 going to four, and that launched a second career as a mechanical designer. And I did that for a lot of years. And, and then uh, about 11 years ago now, I had a chance to uh, transition into the position I'm doing now. Um, I'd imagine it with uh, software configurations and teaching and other things. So um, it's been a good run. I've been enjoying it. Let's talk about nesting. Okay, I've just got a few slides for you. I promise not too many, but uh, inventor's nesting module. Um, I hear questions uh, on a regular basis about inventor nesting. Uh, can inventor nesting take the place of a standalone nesting package? Um, you know, does it have the features I need? Uh, what about machine drivers? Does it talk to my CNC machines? And finally, the very basic, how does it work? And so one of the things that we're going to do today is we're going to answer those basic questions. And then we're going to switch over and actually take a look at the software itself and see exactly how it works, um, how to prepare files for nesting, um, how to prepare the nesting template, uh, get that set up so that everything runs smoothly, um, creating and comparing nesting studies, just basically how it all works. And finally, importing files from non-inventor sources. And nesting does have the ability to do that. And there are a, a few qualifications to that. So we'll, we will take a look at those as well. So uh, first question, can inventor nesting take the place of a standalone nesting package? Well, you've got full featured nesting packages. Um, they're often standalone. Sometimes they come as part of a design tool set. Um, these packages often have advanced features. They're, they'll they'll do things like part ordering, work order grouping. You can you can manage um, work orders coming into them. They have inventory management. They know how many sheets of material you have. Um, they may do remnant management. Know what shapes of rims are left over. Uh, they often come with a driver library, so they are they are cross platform as far as your CNC machines concerned. They can talk to a wide variety of machines, and they have sophisticated reporting tools. Um, potential drawbacks of this solution: they, you know, they're an expensive package. Uh, you know, uh, enterprise class nesting packages don't come cheap. Um, they may have limited licenses, and they will come with a steep learning curve. So with these kind of packages, what you're likely to get is you're going to have one or two people that are doing the nesting for you. And you know, they know the package, and they are sending the um, data to the CNC machines, and they're managing all this. Um, nesting, in this case, is not something that's necessarily available to everybody. Um, you've also, and whoops. That slide was not like that when I did it earlier. I'm going to blame PowerPoint for that. Sorry about that. Um, you have machine-specific nesting packages um, run with a particular CNC machine. Um, these come with the machines. Uh, you, you usually have a computer that comes with a CNC machine. It will have a nesting package, generally speaking, um, uh, in it. It will have a very targeted feature set. These are not necessarily 
Um, nesting packages will talk to any machine. They're, they're optimized for the machine they run on. And what that means is that typically the, the actual CNC operator in this case is the one doing the nesting. Um, that can create a bottleneck. Um, and that individual is usually pretty busy. And so another thing that this does is it takes nesting out of the hands of the designers. You know, you're, you're not going to run a just a, a preliminary test nest, you know, every couple of days on your design to see how things are going. Um, the, the guy that's running that CNC machine may be way too busy for that. And so you don't have that option necessarily. Um, I did, uh, when I was researching all this, take a look at a few free nesting packages. There are a few of them out there. Um, the price is right. The features, mm, uh, the ones that I looked at um, had limited feature set, looked a little bit difficult to use. Um, if, if that's a good option for you, I'm, I'm I'm not really sure on that in that case. I looked at them a little bit and decided, you know, I'm not sure I'd want to use those in a production environment. They're they're free for a reason. Um, by the way, in talking to people that do nesting, I also do quite often find manual nesting. If you're doing this, my sympathies are with you. Uh, some individual is taking DXF files and fitting them together like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, if you're doing this, you're not alone. Uh, I, I see it um, regularly out in the industry. Um, there has to be a better solution than that, but some people are just struggling along nesting things manually. Okay, so let's take a look at inventor nesting and see where it falls in all this. The, the, the bottom line here is that inventor nesting is designed to fit somewhere between the enterprise level nesting package and the, the dedicated CNC package. Um, nesting comes with, uh, with Autodesk's in manufacturing design collection. Um, I believe now, I, I'm not certain on this, so, so don't quote me, but I believe that you can also get it separately. There are ways to do that now. When it was first introduced a couple of years ago, there was, it, it came with the manufacturing design collection or not at all. Um, I haven't looked at the licensing lately, but I heard something about it maybe being available. Um, can't attest to it. Um, inventors nesting can nest inventor sheet metal files, or it can also import DXFs. We'll take a look at both those options in the course of the demo when I get to that just a little bit. Um, but those are basically the two types of files that it can handle. Um, it talks about importing other um, you know, other CAD applications, um, shapes and stuff. But what it really comes down to is the DXF um, import export. Um, Inventor nesting has no direct machine commu communication. This is an important differentiator um, between this and the other packages that you will see. It's not designed to talk directly to CNC machines. It exports DXF files, which are then imported into your um, CNC machines. So that's, you know, you're, you're, there's no button to push in inventor nesting that will send a file directly to a CNC machine. Um, it's a DXF export. So that's, that's something to take note of. Um, inventor nesting has very, I, I put in here no inventory control. It's very rudimentary uh, to the point where I would question its usefulness. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it when we see it. Um, but when you think about it, inventor nesting is designed to run on individual designers' machines. All of your designers, if you have the manufacturing collection, will have access to this. But it isn't talking to your ERP system, and it's not talking to your inventory system. It's not tracking work orders, anything like that. Um, if, if you need that kind of functionality, you need a full-featured standalone um, nesting package. Inventor's not designed to compete with those in that, in that space. So no inventory control, no advanced material or work order handling. Um, however, 
there are some pretty cool things that it will do. And so I'm gonna end the slideshow now and get right into Inventor. And the first thing that we're gonna address here is how to prep Inventor files to work with Inventor nesting. And actually it's really very simple. Um, what I've got here on the screen is a, interestingly enough, a CNC burn table. This is a, uh, this is a design that I, I bought the plans for and modeled it up uh, just as a point of interest and in thinking I might build one of these one day. So uh, one thing about this particular design is it's, it's designed to be built one up. It's not a you know, commercially manufactured thing. Um, and so all the sheet metal parts on this are eight gauge steel which of course is, you know, some of that's way overkill, but it, it's very economical in terms of, okay, I just got to buy one type of, of steel and get that CNC cut. And I have almost all of my parts to build this thing. And so that's the intent of this. And so we're going to look at a, we're going to look at another model in a minute that has in a, in a bit that has different um, sheet metal styles in it. But in this one, if I open up one of these parts, this is a this is a regular sheet metal part, and if I look at my sheet metal defaults, um, I've got various rules in here. It they you know twelve gauge steel, three sixteenths, three eighths, eight gauge, a few others, but this eight gauge steel, there is two things that nesting is going to look for um, from your sheet metal rule. It's going to look for the material, which in this case is just simply inventor's standard mild steel. And it's going to look for the thickness, in this case, 0.164. As long as you have those two things, nesting is going to be happy. Now, the, the nice thing about this is that, of course, that's taken care of by your sheet metal rules. So uh, the bottom line is the first thing that you need to do to set up your parts to work with nesting is have good sheet metal rules you know, with, with that have at the very least a material and the thickness. And those two are gonna do, do it. One more thing that Inventor Nesting is gonna look for is a flat pattern. Now, the reason it wants a flat pattern is that if I look at this assembly here, I've got all kinds of parts in here. Some of these don't get nested. You know, I've got hardware and I've got motors and, and racks and, and different things. Not all of this gets nested. What is going to happen is when I import this top level assembly into nesting, it's going to sift through and it's going to find all the parts with a flat pattern. And that's what it's going to nest. What that means is that even a part like this one with no bends in it, I still need to have a flat pattern. So three things. Um, you need a material and a thickness in each one of your part files. They need to be a sheet metal part with a flat pattern. And once that is set up, you're all set on the inventor side to, uh, to run your nesting. Now, let's go over to nesting and see what kind of setup we need on that side. If nesting is installed on your machine, you're going to have a brand new template down here. Standard uh, iNest is, is the template, uh, is the extension, I-N-E-S-T. And I've got an old one in here, but I was playing around with it. But I'm just going to go ahead and create. OK, so this is a blank nesting file. And we talked about setup on the inventor side. Um, now I'm going to talk about setup on the nesting side. A couple of things that you want to do. First of all, you want to go over here. I've got the nesting tab up here. You want to go to the manage panel, pull this down and click providers. All oh, this is coming up on my other screen. Okay, so this is the default providers per source, DWG. Uh, it can take an AutoCAD DWG file. Um, it can take an AutoCAD DXF file. 
it can accept an inventor assembly. And for IPT, what I have here is I've checked inventor sheet metal. Now, if I check the rest of these, composite part, inventor part, generic CAD, um, if these are checked, when I bring that assembly in, it's gonna try to nest everything. It's gonna try to nest the round parts and the, and the hardware and the, the, you know, the things that aren't sheet metal that you wouldn't CNC cut. And so really what you want here for a, for a smooth operation that you don't have to sort through later and pick and choose, um, you want just inventor sheet metal. If you, if you pick the rest of this, there's gonna be some work afterward to go in and exclude parts and, and mess with things. Um, what I'm attempting to show you here is the, the, the easy way to use nesting. And we'll talk about some of the other options in a little bit. But in this case, if I just pick inventor sheet metal, that's that uh, routine that I mentioned earlier where it's gonna go ahead and sort through um, the assembly file and only pick stuff that has a flat pattern. So my template is set up that way by default. So that's the first stop and it's kind of hidden. You, you need to know about that provider's um, idea, uh, tool there. The next stop is the process material library. And let me get this over here. Okay, there's two things going on here. One of them is material and one of them is packaging. And the first thing here is the, is the material. Um, notice, you know, I've got eight gauge steel, I've got three sixteenths, I've got, I, I've got um, materials over here that match the materials that I had in Inventor, the, the, in the sheet metal styles. Notice my, my material ID, Inventor fills this in automatically, is steel mild and then the, then the thickness. These are the two numbers that I mentioned that it's looking for. If I come over here and add a material, uh, I can come in here and select you know, steel mild. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna go 20 gauge. So 20 gauge is 0 0.036. And notice it fills this in over here, this material ID. Um, and in the comment over here, I can say 20 gauge. And notice I can click on a provider here. Inventor's the only option at the moment, but that allows me to come in here and I'm gonna have to hunt for it. So I've got I've got my steel mile. There it is. Okay. So I can actually tie these two together if I if I want to. Now that I've done this here for the 20 gauge, I will I'm definitely going to want to go back into my sheet metal template and create a sheet metal style based on that 20 gauge steel. Um, but I'm set up here with my material. And now if I look my material and we wrap up some of this stuff, for each one of these different materials I've got, I've got a four by four and a four by eight sheet defined here. For the new one I created, it just created a generic packaging 22. I'm going to rename that. to four by eight. And my length is gonna be 96. Now, another thing I can do here is I can go over here to the nesting and I can specify some things. I'm just gonna leave them all at zero, but left trim, right trim, bottom trim. You know, I, I've got some trim settings I can set if I wanna leave a little margin around the edge. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that in this case. But if I say okay, and let's kick back in there and take a look at that now. If I go 20 gauge, go to my packaging. If 
there's 036, four by eight, 96 by 48. If I want a four by four sheet of this as well, I can simply come in here and add packaging. And make this 48. And that four by four. And I can add comments to these as well. If I go then and look at this now, the four by eight is set at default. If I right click on this one, I can set that as a default packaging. But uh, when I do a nesting study, I can specify whether I just want you know four by eight sheets or whether I can whether I can mix and match them. Um, so this is the setup that you need to do. You need to set your providers underneath the manage and then get your process material libraries down. And this is all done. If, if you do this all in the template, it'll all be ready for, the, for you when you start a new nesting file. And so your sheet metal templates have the sheet metal rules in them. Your parts have the flat patterns and your nesting template has all of your steels and all of the packages that you can use. And by the way, the form, if you guys use a roll, um, you, can, uh, you can do a roll as well. I can set in a cost in here. Uh, if it, th there is a report that is created with nesting that will give me an idea, uh, you know, just a rough idea of the cost if I put a cost in here um, for that particular type of steel. But I'm gonna go ahead and say okay here. And now I'm set up to do nesting from Inventor the easy way. And I'll show you what I mean when I say the easy way in just a moment, because the first thing that I'm going to do here, so I'm going to click sources. And I have a source file. Um, my apologies, notice that little, my, my computer, they shipped me a new laptop a little while ago, and it's having some kind of graphics glitch that we're having a hard time figuring out, and, and it's doing weird things like that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and find I'm going to go into that CNC burn table and I'm going to find that main burn table assembly. And what it just did was, it, and it's, it's still processing a little bit, but it's, it's going to go through that assembly and sift through, again, looking for things that have flat patterns. Take it just a moment. What we want is the little green check marks over here. I'm starting to get them. Okay, it looks like it's found them all. If I, clear, if I pop this over, you notice this is all eight gauge, eight, eight, eight gauge steel. So everything on here is going to be part of the same nest. Um, a little idiosyncrasy. Uh, it, it, nesting displays the units as millimeters. It's not millimeters, it's in inches. Um, So I've got the parent um, is the burn, ta burn table main. The source is the part file itself. Unit rule, source location, source provider. Configuration is going to be default and the material name and everything come in. Now, if I introduce a material from Inventor that is not in my nesting template, so you know, I just created that 20 gauge um, material in there. But if that, if I had not done that, and and one of the parts in here was 20 gauge, what nesting will do is will pop up a dialog box and say, "Hey, you're you're bringing materials and thicknesses in that I don't recognize. Do you want me to create a material for that?" And it will do that for you. And so you know, you do not necessarily have to have the nesting template set up in order for this to work. But what you will have to do is go after, go back in after the fact and tweak those. You know, it you know it doesn't know material sizes. It's going to give you just a generic guess. I, I think it does four by eight as a as a as a guess. Um, you don't want nesting to have to guess if if you can avoid it. And so that was the point of spending all the time showing you the setup. 
but it found everything. I've got nice, you know, green circles with check marks, which again are, are small icons, graphics, graphics glitches. I gotta love them. Um, hit OK. And what nesting is gonna do, you know, I, I, I get all my parts over here in the browser. And notice as I scroll up and down here, it highlights them. But what it did, would it, was it lined all the parts up in a row? And I can choose how they look. I've got you know, the, the option uh, 2D, just gonna give me a flat 2D on these guys. 3D extruded. So what I'm seeing is simply the imported flat patterns for each one of these parts. And it just lines them up in a row, like I said, and this gives me the opportunity to just go down the list and take a look at these guys. I can just look at them and, and make sure nothing got slipped in that wasn't supposed to be there, make sure everything looks good. Um, if you don't have that uh, in, in your providers, if you don't have just this box checked, if you've got regular inventor parts checked, you know, you'll get all the other stuff too. And it'll all be lined up in here expecting to be um, expecting to be uh, nested. So it looks pretty good. Looks like I got everything. Um, the, different, the different styles will be color coded. In this case, they're all the same. So I got one color code. Uh, we'll show you how that, that works in a little bit. I've got another uh, assembly to nest here. There are all my source files. And I can go to nest properties here and see each one of them. And there's some properties here. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but, but notice, uh, you know, how can these guys be oriented? Um, what is the possible deviation um, from the orientation? You can set a, uh, you know, you, you can set a deviation. Maybe, you, you know, you can go 20 degrees one way or another at increments of one degree or something like that. Um, in this case, it's just allowing 90 degree uh, increments of setups. It gives me a length and width of each part. Um, uh, can I mirror the part? Um, other than that, a lot of this is just informational. But what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll come back in here and tweak a couple things in a moment to show you how it works. But I'm just going to say OK. And I'm going to click Create NIST Study. Let's just hop right in here. And so I get a, I, I can name the study. I get a dialog box here. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, we'll take a look at these uh, options here in a moment. I'm just going to accept the defaults and get this guy going. And so that dialog box goes away and it's like, is anything going on? Well, if I, if I wrap up my geometry sources, I can see that my nest is working here. And so it's going to take a couple moments. And let's go back to a front view. And now I have a nest. And you can see, I, I, I think it does a pretty good job. Um, compacts everything really good. Now, looking at this, I can see, I, I notice one thing, these guys right here, these, these are my table legs and they get bent right up the middle vertically. I'd rather these were not oriented vertically like they are in this nest. Um, and so I can make some tweaks to that. And that part is, I believe it's frame, Frame 01A okay. and 1B. There's there's two of them, 1A and 1B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my nest properties. I'm going to find those guys. There they are right there. And I'm going to unbind them and I'm going to tell them you cannot rot the, rotate these 90 degrees or 270. 
So the only rotations I'll allow are zero or 180. If I say okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run another nesting study. Now let's take a look at this. Um, job quantity, single value. I can tell it I want more than one of these. The reason this, you know, this isn't just a single and make one, make two, make three, is that I can group assemblies. I, I can bring in an, another assembly into this and nest it in the same operation. And in that case, it's going to give me the options to say, okay, I want two of assembly one and four of assembly two, and that kind of thing. Um, looking at all the shapes, if I want to exclude a particular shape, here would be the part where I could uncheck it for this particular nesting study. If I want to allow four by four sheets as well, I can push that guy over there like that. Don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm going to remove, uh, where's the remove on that guy? Let's go ahead and cancel that. Great nesting study again. Doesn't look like there's a remove on there. I thought there was. Um, some, you've got some global parameters. I'm going to start in the lower left of whatever sheet I use. Uh, minimum compute time, 60 seconds. Maximum is 300 seconds. I can set a desired yield. And I can minimize length width or minimize length types and width. So I can set some parameters on how the nest works. Let's go ahead and say OK. And so my second nest study is running now. And as soon as it's done, it's going to put it right down underneath the first one. I've got it set to automatically zoom in on, yeah, that auto zoom there zooms in on anything I have selected. Okay, so there's my second study, and the major difference between the two, of course, is that the, the four legs are oriented horizontally. And so I can see, you know, I, I actually that kind of improved things a little bit. I like my I like my remnant a little bit better. Um, not a huge difference in terms of material consumed. And so there are my nesting studies. Now, now that I've got them, what do I do with them? Um, if I want to send this to a CNC machine, what I do is each one of these sheets, I right click on it and export. I get two options for exporting. I can export it as a DXF file or as a nesting file. Um, if I export a sheet one DXF, um, I can set a configuration file that will uh, specify um, layers, it, it, you know, if I want things to go out to certain layers, I'm going to go ahead and just accept the defaults there and write that file out. And I'm actually, uh, I realized I didn't have AutoCAD fired up. I was going to take a look at that file on AutoCAD. So we'll fire that up. But you export one of the, each, each one of these sheets exports as a DXF file and it's going to be layered. Um, uh, stuff on the different layers. Look, okay, it's almost ready. Ha, there it goes. So let's go find a sheet to open up and see what they look like. Um, Raise. Um, where did that, did put it in here? Hang on a second. I didn't notice where it was going to put that file. Should have paid better attention to that. Let's put it in the nesting folder. Save that guy out.
Okay, so we want to be DXFs. And this is what you get. And if I look at my layers, I've got basically one layer for the nest itself and one layer for everything else. So you can drop that off of there if you want to. Now, this can be configured. Uh, this can be tweaked. Um, I don't want to, we're uh, running out of time, so I don't want to go into that. But you, you can set it up to set different things on different layers. Um, I just accepted the defaults. But this is how Inventor talks to the rest of the world once you have a nest. Uh, worth mentioning here, there is a report. If I double click on this, it's going to generate a complete report. You know, here are all the files, what the settings were. It's really hard to see this. It's it, it, it's kind of designed to be printed. Um, inventory, here's sheet details, what the sheets look like, what parts were on what sheets, part summaries, any excluded parts. So it, it does generate a pretty cool report, um, complete. But you can see really the idea behind this is that you know this makes running a quick nest to see how you know to see how your design is evolving um th this puts this in the hand of any designer and this is one of the main things that nesting is designed to do now nesting may be all that you need and if you don't need the enterprise class stuff you know nesting is going to be great to do everything but even if you have enterprise class nesting the ability of your designers to run a test and say, okay, you know, how much material am I consuming with this design? We're, you know, we're two thirds of the way through the project. Um, they want to know an estimated cost. Well, um, you know, I can't bug the CNC guy, machine guy to go do a, a, a nest on this thing right now. And uh, he's got other things on his plate. I can kick out a quick nest and see how this, you know, see how stuff looks. Very quickly, um, just to get an idea, I'm going to create a new nest file. Yeah, I've got a, I had to reload 2023 not too long ago, and I've still got style conflicts. And I'm going to nest this guy here. And the main thing about this, this is a little struck mini dozer that I'm modeled up, I just kind of to guinea pig on. Um, well, I've actually got one of these in my garage too, so there was a point of interest there. But the the different difference between this one and the other one is this one uses a lot of different sheet metal styles. Uh, you know, this was not this was designed to be made in you know production manufacturing. So um, if I go here, hit sources, and I find that guy uh, that's in crawler. There he is. Say okay. And I've shown you much of the, most of these options already. I'm just going to go ahead and get right to the nest study, so I can show you what it looks like what it looks like with various sheet metals. Okay, so you can see they're color coded, different colors. If I create a nest study, just hit the defaults and go. So right away, I can see that if I'm only building one of these, it'd behoove me to consolidate a little bit. You know, I got I got some sheet metal styles that's like that guy. Could he be another size that would you know that would group him a little bit better? No. If I'm making you know. 500 of them, not such a big deal. But I got one sheet metal thickness here that uh, just has a few parts on it.
but that's what it looks like when you have various sheet metal styles it just stacks them up and and uh, uh, runs them for you that way one more thing i want to show you and i'm almost to what i told Lori i would take up so um, we will get to q a very quickly here but i'm going to start one more i nest And for sources, I'm going to go in and uh, see where are you? Shoot metal. There you are. If you're bringing in DXFs, now the thing about DXFs is is that they will provide the shape, but they cannot provide, they, they, there's no way for them to provide a material or a thickness or a quantity. All of that you're gonna have to add manually later. And that's that's kind of the caveat to working with DXF. So it, it'll do it just fine, but there's gonna be some tweaking after the fact. All that, inf all that information is supplied by Inventor, but notice what it's gonna do here it it guessed it just it, it it suggested a material 0.105 steel mild um the other thing that i will get here and i it will work but notice i've got shape number does not close the reason for that is because i've got uh, a bend lines in those dxfs so it's seeing that a little weird. It's not seeing a, a shape, but it is going to um, process them okay. And there are the sheet metal shapes I brought in. You can see the bend lines, and that's why it was giving that weird message. So I've got rights and lefts, so the bend lines are on the back sides of those. But uh, okay. so at this point. What I'm going to want to do, and, and this stuff all happens to be the same sheet metal, but it wasn't what Inventor brought in, or yeah, it wasn't the guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to control select all of these, right click and say multi-edit. And I'm going to change it to the right steel. Okay, so now that took care of material and thickness. Uh, I have a source quantity here. How many of these do I need? Um, in this case, it's one of each, so I don't have to mess with this, but you'd have to be mindful of this if you're bringing in something that, that you know, maybe you need to make multiples. And so you have this extra information that you have to provide because inventor's not providing it. And so if I go ahead and say, okay, other than that, Um, stack size. Parameters output. Oh, no, for the job quantity, I want three here. Again, graphics glitch, that guy's really small. Single value, three. Let's go ahead and say, okay. Let's go to run the nesting study. And there's three of these. Nested. So other than that, it's the same. You just need to know if you're if you're if you're importing stuff other than Inventor, there's extra material, extra um, information that you're going to have to add after the fact. Um, other than that, nesting works pretty good. And we are right about uh, we got a, a little under 15 minutes left. So um, I will uh, at this point I'm going to give it back to Lori and let her uh, moderate some questions, and I will do my best to answer. Um, Lori, you there?